they use um, forklifts and so on. So um, all the up and down, you know, some in some shops, there's trolleys. So all of these cause some sort of abrasion, some wear and tear of the surface or the floor surface. So this is what abrasion is. <clears throat> then we look at erosion. Now, erosion is the wearing of surfaces by um, actions of fluid, water, you know. Um, normally, when there's a, 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 um, a, a, an excessive amount of water that is moving, um, an abrasive action of fluids, right? This is what erosion is. Then we look at cavitation. I'm sorry, guys, I think I'm getting a, cold, a little cold, so my voice is just not <clears throat> working out, but I hope you can hear me. Then we look at cavitation. Cavitation is the sudden change of direction in the fast flowing of fluids. So as water flows, if you look at floods or videos of floods, you can see that sometimes all of a sudden, there's a, 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 an immediate change in the direction of the of the fluid floods or in the direction of the of the water and normally <clears throat> this happens happens in, in in a flooding situation but in the context of of um of concrete when we're looking at cavitation we're just looking at the sudden change of direction of fast moving fluids so if fluids are able to penetrate into the into the concrete right um, the sudden change of direction of the fluids, that's what we're talking about here. And then we're dealing with uh, freezing. Now, in order for freezing to occur, normally water expands by about 9% um, when it freezes or when it turns into ice. Um, but then now, when, when it turns into ice, there's normally... Um, <clears throat> A bit of cracking, a bit, bit of uh, um, a propagation, and normally this is due to the freezing process or due to the, the the cycle of freezing and thawing. So freezing and melting, freezing and melting. In that cycle, there's normally an expansion, and <clears throat> what happens is that by freezing and melting and so on, um, there's normally some sort of an expansion. Um, with regards to the wa water or the fluids within the concrete. All right, then we look at salt crystallization. Um, salt enter concrete in the form of, uh, you know, solutions due to wetting, um, drying, and normally in the wetting and drying, the pores increase. And as the pores increase, then, of course, crystals are formed um, within the various um, pores. Right, so um, these are the five um, mechanical and physical processes that affect durability. You should be able to explain them or you should be able to identify them or pick them out in a, um, in a multiple choice situation. Right, <clears throat> the next one is the chemical factors and process affecting durability. Now, with regards to this, we're looking at attack by pure water, attack by acids, attack by sulfates and then we looking we'll look at the alkali silica reaction <clears throat> sorry guys Hold on for me. I did forget to record this lecture, but I can see it's being recorded. Did any one of you press record? My dollar was that you? If it was, thank you very much. I see it's recording. <clears throat> Just send it to me as soon as you're done. I don't know if I press record or it's recording automatically. All right. Um, so where was I? So I'm looking at attack by pure water. Now, pure water um normally is calcium hungry um and because it's calcium hungry it seeps the calcium 
hydroxide from hardened cement paste. So it sucks it out, it, it leaches it out. <clears throat> um, um, and this is what is known as attack by pure water. So when we use pure water um, to mix concrete, we must understand that um, as the, the, the concrete hardens and, and all that, the, the water um, will, will seep all the calcium. Or if you pour um, um, water on, on hardened concrete, um, what happens is that the water starts to you know, seep all the um, calcium hydroxide from the hardened cement paste. <clears throat> Attack by acids. Now, when we look at attack by acids, we we are concerned with um, acid rain. Um, and acid rain is normally due to pollution. If we look at acid rain, acid rain is normally made um, due to the acidic atmospheric pollutions that um, causes, they normally cause environmental harm, harm to forests, harm to lakes, rivers, waters, and so on. Now, the main causes are due to the industrial burning of coals, fossil fuels, waste gases, which normally contain sulfur, hydrogen oxides. And when they normally combine with atmospheric water, right, an acid rain occurs. Um, when they um, combine with atmospheric um, water, then they form Acid. So this is how acid rain happens, and this is how um, hardened concrete is attacked by acid. So we're not thinking about just buying an acid from somewhere and pouring it onto the hardened concrete, but we're talking about the acids that are formed in the atmosphere due to um, acid rain. All right. Now, um, if you look on table 3.2, for those of you with the textbook, and also if you go to page 20, you will see that um, normally acids in, in, um, react with, with alkalines or the alkaline compound of hardened cement paste. And uh, this results in exposing of aggregates. So um, if you look at table 3.2, you will see the various uh, compounds of, of cement. Um, I'm just bringing it to your attention that though we are in chapter 10 right now, but looking at the various compounds within concrete and the compounds that react um, to form um, from some sort of acids that attack the hardened cement or the hardened concrete, we're going back to the basic nature of cement and how cement is made. Um, I do remember when we were there that I was not really particularly concerned about you remembering the chemical equations and the various compounds and so on and so forth. But having an understanding that cement is made out of those components is, will suffice. But this brings us back to the point that um, these acids react with alkaline compounds. And we're talking about the acids in the atmosphere or acid rain. They react with the alkaline compounds of hardened cement paste. And as a result, sometimes you'll find that the um, aggregates get exposed. All right, how do we prevent this? Um, normally by using um, aggregates such as limestone. Um, and these are, are um, a means of improving acid resistance um, within the hardened um, concrete. All right, <clears throat> attack by sulfates. Um, when we when we look at attack by sulfates, we we have to consider how sulfates first and foremost enter concrete. Now they enter concrete and react with the concrete, and as a result, they cause internal expansion forces. As they cause internal expansion forces, so when sulfates enter concrete, now if we're looking at sulfates, we're still going back to table 3.2, um, looking at the the chemical nature of cement. Um, so if we, when we look at sulfates, we look at um, how sulfates react within the concrete. And when they react in the concrete, what happens is that they cause um, um, some sort of expansion within the concrete. And these expansions lead to cracking. All right. They cause some sort of expansion forces which lead to cracking. All right. And then the last one is the alkali silica reaction. The alkali silica reaction, um, some 
aggregate contains silicates, and normally these silicates react with the alkalis of cement. And uh, when they react, they cause internal expansions, and these lead to cracking. I think we've just mentioned that as well. Now, in order to prevent this, we use fly ash, we use GGPS, and um, in using these, uh, we reduce the content of active alkalis. Now, active alkalis are um, basics. They, it, or it's a basic or an, an alkali is a basic. Um, normally, iron salts and of metals and, you know, chemical elements. And what happens is that um, uh, they are normally, um, if you look at alkali specifically, you're looking at um, a, a base that dissolves in water. So, when we look at the alkali silica reaction, we're looking at a base that reacts with silica. And in that reaction, some sort of expansion forces um, occurs and this leads to cracking. So in preventing it, then we use obviously fly ash and GGBS, which are cement extenders. So this automatically tells us that when we go back to the basics, what we mix right in the fresh state in the in the manif in the making of concrete is directly um, um, or has a direct impact or a direct influence on the properties of hardened concrete it will have a direct influence on the strength of hardened concrete it will have the direct influence on the durability of the hardened concrete so if we don't mix it up well definitely now um, durability will become a problem in the future Okay, moving forward, we're going to have a look now at the deleterious reaction between the ingredients in concrete. Now, deleterious, of course, as I've mentioned, is um, harmful, um, harmful reaction. <clears throat> now, the most common, if we look at durability in itself, um, deleterious reactions are the most common type of um, a loss of durability in concrete or in concrete structures. Now, concrete, if you're looking at reinforced concrete, right, <clears throat> concrete provides the protective barrier, the protection uh, um, of the reinforcing steel against any physical attack or against any chemical attack. When we talk about the physical attack and the chemical attack, these are the ones that we've actually looked at um, before this point. Now, concrete, as we know, are um, highly alkaline. And because of that, they have some sort of protective barrier or they protect the reinforcing steel from rusting. Now, if concrete isn't present in... Um, in in well you can't have conc uh, reinforced concrete without concrete but if concrete did not have the ability to prevent steel from rusting right then we would obviously have a chemical reaction within the concrete and then of course this would um you know cause um the reinforced concrete to be less durable also we know that uh, rusting in itself also causes um, spalling around the reinforcement. All right. Um, a pH reduction in, um, if we look at the deleterious reactions, normally this happens and causes a pH reduction. Um, and this is known as carbonation, right? And it's the reaction of atmospheric carbon dioxide and the calcium hydroxide in the cement paste. So again, we're looking at what is in the atmosphere and how it affects the ingredients of the heart of, of the cement paste. So carbon dioxide in the atmosphere reacting with a calcium hydroxide in the cement paste. And um, this normally happens over time. So it, it, it takes a relatively long time for carbonation to, to, to occur. So this is also a, um, an example of the kind of harmful reactions between the ingredients of concrete. All right. 
And then we have um, looking specifically at factors that affect carbonation. We have moisture content of concrete, we have gas permeability of concrete, and we have calcium hydroxide content. So the content of hydro calcium hydroxide within the concrete. Now, in, 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 um, according to the SANS, we can easily um, do a uh, carbonation test by using phenolphthalene. So um, for those of you that would be interested in doing a test, normally these are done by the civil engineers and stuff like that. We don't really do it, but at least just have an idea that some sort of a carbonation test can be done um, and not necessarily go into detail. But if you were probably doing civils, then they will have a lab where they do these kind of tests. You're also welcome to maybe watch a video if you want to. If I find one, I'll put it onto the Moodle site. <clears throat> okay, slide number 59. All right, there's an image there which illustrates the deleterious reaction between ingredients of concrete. We're looking specifically at steel corrosion. Okay, so you can see the steel reinforcing bar. All right, you can see a bit of cracking and spalling of the concrete cover. So that's a, that's a good degree of concrete cover, right? Um, you see the ingress of corrosive species, example, chlorides and carbon dioxide. Obviously, these come from the atmosphere or from um, you know, water or an ingress of water and so on. Um, so they penetrate through the cracks and they actually just enter. And of course, this causes... Um, the, the reinforcement to corrode, right? So this is an interesting um, illustration of how um, corrosion um, happens. Now, sometimes these type of corrosive species like the chlorides and the carbon dioxide are maybe in some cases already in the concrete and they can sometimes be in the concrete already due to what... Um, a not well designed mix or not mixing the concrete according to you know a proper design mix or even the workmanship the people that are mixing the concrete um, are they mixing it properly are they mixing it to to the correct method of mixing are they just adding in you know certain things as you heard um, back from the beginning of the year there are some situations where sunlight liquid and the, and the likes are even added to mixing concrete for whatever reason I don't know. So corrosive species may already be present in the concrete and as a result it makes the concrete contaminated. All right. And this is obviously from the mixing phase. Um, okay, so that is a nice illustration of the seal corrosion within concrete. Okay, so now I'm looking at, we're going to have a look at uh, the performance-based durability tests, designs and specifications in South Africa. This is the last bit of this chapter. Now, there are three types of tests on, on page um, slide 56. There are three types of tests. We have the oxygen permeability index test, the chloride conductivity test, and the water sorptivity test. All right, now, if you look at figure 10.5, we're looking at a sample, a cross section of a concrete uh, structure where you we see the reinforcement, the rebar. We have um, the concrete cover. Okay, so you can actually see that that adequate concrete cover. Now, unfortunately, I cannot see very well. I think it's a 50 millimeter concrete cover. I'm not sure if you can actually um, zoom in and see, but this adequate um, um, concrete cover. So this obviously gives some, you know, it gives enough or adequate protection of the rebar. All right. Now, when we look at the various tests, these are durability tests. All right. So these are tests that are performed to assess the durability of hardened concrete. OK, so we, I'm just going to give you a brief uh, description of each. And then um, I have uploaded, I think, videos of the ox oxygen permeability index test to the water subtivity. And I just didn't have the time to do the chloride conductivity, but I'll do it um, later, later on. All right, so the oxygen permeability index test, and this is normally done to assess the state of compaction, the presence of bleed water voids and channels, and also it is used to test the degree of interconnect 
inter interconnectedness or interconnectivity of the pores within the concrete structure. All right, so let me repeat. The oxygen permeability index test assesses the state of compaction of the, of the, of the carbon concrete. It assesses the presence of bleed water voids and channels in the concrete, hardened concrete, and then it also um, assesses the degree of interconnectedness, how interconnected the pores within the structure are, how are they connected. So this is the oxygen permeability index test, um, a brief description, but you would you would definitely understand it very well when you watch the video. Um, I think we should actually watch the video right now. Okay, so I want you all to watch the video and then just give me a thumbs up when you finish. It's on the Moodle site. So you're welcome to watch it now.
see that one person is done. Let's just give a few minutes for everyone to finish. One more person is finished, um, just a few minutes and then we'll carry on. Okay, I think everybody is finishing up right now. So it seems like a lot of you have finished. Great, thank you. So let's proceed. All right, so that was the oxygen permeability index test. I hope it was clear. Just I watched it myself and I found it extremely um, interesting to watch. All right, so the next one is the chloride conductivity test. Um, in the chloride conductivity test, this assesses the ability of the binder particle, so the binding agent within the concrete, to bind chloride ions and to inhibit their progress through concrete, to prevent them from progressing in concrete. Um, again, with the chloride conductivity test, I was just actually trying to upload the, the video, but you guys can watch it in your own. Um, after the lecture, I'll just um, upload the link for you. But um, it, it obviously assesses the, the ability of the binded particles in the concrete to bind chloride ions and to inhibit the, the, uh, the progress through the concrete. Um, this is also a test uh, no, pff, normally done um, by our civil guys. Um, just that for our purpose, we, we should just have some sort of understanding of what the, um, the particular test does. And then the last one is the water sorptivity test, which is a test that is used for testing the rate of water absorption in 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 in, con in, in hardened concrete or in concrete. So, sorptivity obviously is the rate of movement of wetting, you know, um, through the pores or the porous materials under some sort of a, um, um, absorptive forces. It's normally used to assess the nature or the extent of early curing, um, obviously considering the cover of concrete on reinforcement, so early curing on, especially focusing on the cover of concrete, and it can be used as a quality control on site as well. Okay, if we go to slide 58, that is the the schematic diagram of an oxygen permeation or permeability test. Now, when you look, watch the video, you saw this particular device or apparatus, if I'm not mistaken, it was actually in it. Um, but it's obviously much better when you watch the video because you can see the entire process. 
the next one, which is slide 59, is the chloride conductivity test, and that is also the apparatus, and you'll see it when I do the... So in, in the test, we actually... Um, um, we, we, we assess just the ability of that um, specimen to conduct some sort of... Um, or to, to, to contain some sort of, of energy. Um, and you'll see that in, in the video when I send you the test especially when there are ions in, in it, um, you'll see the reaction or you'll see the effect within the, um, the test. Then the last one is the water subtivity where we look at specifically capillary or capillary action. And then we, we look at how water is absorbed into the hardened concrete, specifically looking at the surface and then also considering the um, the concrete cover, um, so as to prevent the you know some sort of reaction with the rebars. So, looking at the specific test, um, of course, if the if water penetrates or water is absorbed into the concrete, specifically the the coverage, um, very easily or very quickly, then you know that. The, 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 the quality of that concrete is questionable um, because at the end of the day, um, when you mix concrete and it hardens, it, it, that hardened concrete should not absorb water. The, there'll always be a bit of water on the surface, but it shouldn't absorb in such a way that it penetrates all the way through to the reinforcement, causing some sort of a, a corrosive or a, a chemical reaction, which causes corrosion. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, um, this does bring us to the end of chapter 10. Um, I promised that I'll put a little quiz um, up for you to complete. I'll do that between now and the, and the weekend. Um, and the quiz will maybe cover chapter, chapter, specifically chapter 9 and 10, or maybe I'll do it from 8, 9, and 10. Um, I'm not going to make it too long, but it will more or less give you some sort of idea of, of what to expect in terms of multiple choice. Um, please watch the video. If you go online on Moodle, there's the water subtivity test and in brackets SA. So that was specifically to the South African one. Once you've watched that, um, you can then watch the, the, the uh, one right above it. Um, I will just upload the chloride conductivity test um, between now and the next few hours so you can watch it as well. Okay, um, are there any questions for me before we end this next week when we, oh, so I'm not gonna have a lecture with you tomorrow um, because we are actually done with what we needed to do this week. And the reason why we are is because if you remember last week we had started on Thursday with the lecture already. So we kind of like ahead. So. I don't know, or maybe we could start next week's one tomorrow. It's up to you. I don't really mind. Just let me know, or else we can start it on Monday to give you a bit of time to go through everything that we've done, to watch the videos, and of course, um, to just do a little bit of summaries for yourself. So I, I don't mind starting on Monday with the next week's work, but if you want us to start tomorrow, I'm more than happy. You can discuss with the class rep, and she can just let me know. Or you can just text, put a text on the chat and let me know um, what your thoughts are. Okay, good morning, ma'am. You're speaking to Miss mm. Jeannie. Um, I have a question based on Miss the... Jeannie. It's Miss Jeannie. Nongolisa <laughs> Jeannie, the girl by the switch. Of course, I know. I know your voice. I'm just playing with you. Uh, okay. Um, ma'am, when... Uh, okay, I'll... Uh, which attack of the attacks that we mentioned it results in the chalky surface of the concrete? No, when you're looking at the, um, okay, so that is um, efflorescence and also, um, oh, I've forgotten the other name for it now, but if you look at, um, let's go to chapter... Let's go to chapter. Okay, so now that is a chapter I had. Just hold on. I want to take you to. Um, okay, so I'm just going to 
chapter appearance 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 because i want to take you to that page mm. okay okay appearance let's see Okay, great. Go to mm, right. Go to page two hundred and sixty-three. You've jumped the gun with this question of yours. You've moved all the way to <laughs> chapter seventeen. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Okay. Two hundred and sixty-three, ma'am. Yeah, two sixty-three. So we're looking at lime bloom. Lime oh. bloom. So can everyone go to page two hundred and sixty-three? Um. When we get there, I actually have pictures of these uh, type of, of, of uh, concrete appearances or the appearance of concrete from the outside where you have some of these unsightly appearances. And it's normally as a result of um, um, the reaction between the calcium carbonate crystals and also the calcium hydroxide. So the reaction of from the atmosphere and obviously what is in the concrete causes the surface. So lime bloom obviously is the same as efflorescence and it's normally like these whitish patches um, on the surface of, of concrete structures. You'll find a lot when you go to Second Avenue campus, even some of the buildings at, at South Campus, the, those old concrete block-like buildings, you find a lot of them you know, quite unsightly. Um, so it's just a calcium carbonate. It's a layer of calcium carbonate crystals, um, and they result um, due to the reaction of the calcium hydroxide within the hardened cement paste, as well as the um, the uh, if you look at the ca ca carbon um, um, within the atmosphere, so we're looking at chlorides, we're looking at salts, we're looking at the um, the the carbon dioxide within the, the 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 environment, right? So that chemical reaction causes um, efflorescence. Um, a nice picture. Okay, let's see if I can send this to you now. Hmm. I just wonder, okay, let me just let's see. Hmm. Ah, great. I want to see if I can send a picture on the, in the, what you call it, the, the group thing now. Just to, sh just to give you an idea of what we're talking about. Okay, so specific to your question, that will be a chemical, you know, like a, a, a chemical attack because it's a chemical reaction. Oh, okay, thank you, ma'am. Just give me a few, yeah, you're welcome. Just give me a few minutes. Um, okay, let me just see if I can find this picture and send it through to you. Mm hmm. Okay, so I have this picture. Okay, no, let me send you the link. I think that's a better a better plan. Copy. Copy. Okay, so I'm going to send the link right here. Hold on, paste. Okay, what happened there? All right, so that's the link that will... Okay, Monday is good. It will give us time to go through everything. Perfect. No, we can continue on Monday. I don't mind at all. That is the link um, for what what um, my switch lady was talking about just now. Um, uh, yeah. Let me just see quickly. I'm coming. Oh, da, 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 da. 
Okay. Um, so, you see, when we look specifically at lime, okay. When we look specifically at lime bloom, let's wait for it when we look at the appearance of hardened concrete, right? But um, temperature is, 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 is part of it. So we look at, we consider temperature, so we consider the atmospheric temperature uh, quite extensively. Um, we consider a little, a little bit of dampness, you know, so when this dampness of concrete um, um, and you have various temperature differences or differentiation in temperature for over a while or some time, you get all you get that chemical reaction between the dampness, the wetness, and obviously the the atmosphere, the atmosphere with all the 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 compounds in it that react. So it is a chemical reaction. Um, so mm. under this type of um, under what we are doing now, when we look at the deleterious attacks, definitely an attack by acid. So it could be an attack on attack by acid. No, not necessarily attack by acids, but uh, let's see if I can go back. Which one would it fall under? Would be a chemical attack because yeah, we're talking about um, the atmosphere and we're talking about the reaction of um, the compounds within the hardened concrete. So definitely a, a, an acid attack. But when you explain this, right, the interest here is not for you to tell me as an example, um, lime bloom, because lime bloom or efflorescence is an attack that is physically seen on the surface. OK, but when we talk yeah. about attack by acids, we're talking about in the concrete. In the hardened structure. OK, so don't make a mess. Don't don't get confused um, with the attack by acids. I'm looking at slide 51. When we talk about acids, we're talking about the acid rain. We're talking about the effect of the acid rain um, on the hardened concrete and how that reacts. Um, um, with the with the compounds within the um, the cement paste, okay. But that chemical reaction will now physically, if you see it from the um, from the outside, right? Um, if you're looking at a chemical reaction of the uh, compounds of concrete and the atmospheric pressure, um, um, differentiation in atmospheric conditions. So the atmospheric conditions, the wetness, the temperature variations and all of that, that, that chemical reaction will give you um, um, efflorescence. But for this specific one, we're looking at specifically at attacks of that concrete and, and specifically at the hardened paste of the concrete. So the reaction between the ingredients of the concrete inside of it um, that affects the hardened concrete and of course the durability thereof. Thank you, ma'am. Um, okay, I'm just reading to see if there's a question. Man, please watch the, okay, no, I did do that. Monday, I did, okay, so we're going to continue on Monday. So tomorrow we're not going to have lecture, guys. I'm not I'll send you an invite for Monday, not for tomorrow. OK. Um, are there any questions before? Oh, Ram, Ram, Ramakwe? Ramekwa, Ramekwa. Ramekwa, are you here? Ramekwa. She was here, but I see she's gone now. OK, no, anyway, uh, Ramekwa, if I sent her an email. I sent an email to Ramekwa, but now, uh, not an email, a message on Teams. So I just wanted to make sure that she had seen it and she'll check it out. Oh, are you here? Yes. Did you get my message? On, on Teams, I sent you a message with regards to the question you asked. I think I got the question, something about the intrinsic factors um, in Chapter 8. 
All right, so a detailed, okay, so for the rest of you, if you go to page 89, if you go to page 80, uh, page 89, page 90, page, the top of page 91, the intrinsic factors, right? So you have the aggregate, you have aggregate paste interface, you have hardened cement paste, but the aggregate part is explained in depth. So just, you've got to be able to um, read it and all of it, okay? When you get to aggregate paste interface as an example, um, there's, um, there's water, there's age, there's amount of bleed water, etc. So you have to know all of that. Um, I think that was what Remekwa was referring to, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, but anyway, page 89, page 90 and 91. Once you've read that uh, thoroughly, you should you should be fine with the explanation. I know that in the slides it doesn't go into detail because it's just a summary. Um, the textbook is the overall guide for you to follow. Um, is there a question? Also, ma'am, so the chemical attack will not be visible, visibly seen on the surface of the concrete. So if we're talking about. Um, we're talking about 